My boss, Roger Pallon, the founder of Cato's Center for Constitutional Studies, wrote a very prescient uh, Wall Street Journal op-ed in 1991. Like, typically, op-eds have a shelf life of you know, a couple of days at best, but here this is still talked about 25 years later. Uh, but he encapsulated the response of those who were both uh, uneasy with the progressive rewriting of the Constitution, but were also wary about this idea of restraint, seeing it as also originating uh, in the progressive era. Quote, conservatives and classical liberals alike, indeed anyone who favors limited government and a wide range of both personal and economic liberties, should be concerned when the third branch of government effectively withdraws from the scene. The dangers of popular tyranny were well known to the founders. They recognized the tendency of factions, whether majoritarian or special interest, to use government for their own ends, expanding the state in the process. It was for this reason that they drafted a written constitution and created an independent judiciary to interpret it a judiciary that was meant, as Madison put it, to be the bulwark of our liberties. How is the judiciary supposed to be the bulwark of our liberties if it simply defers uh, to the other branches? So courts are charged with holding elected officials' feet to the constitutional fire and striking down laws that exceed the powers that have been granted to these agents by the people. Chief Justice Roberts had to rewrite two important parts of the Affordable Care Act to avoid overturning the law. Um, he tried to be the good conservative by masking his uh, efforts in a show of what he considered to be restraint and even modesty by merely tweaking, rewriting certain of Congress's words rather than uh, striking them down altogether. And I think he failed on his own terms. As the four justices wrote in a joint dissent, the court regards its strained statutory interpretation as judicial modesty. It is not. It amounts instead to a vast judicial overreaching. It creates a debilitated, inoperable version of health care regulation that Congress did not enact and the public does not expect. And so the Chief Justice's immodest passivism, combined with the activism of the four liberal judges, created the Frankenstein's monster that was NFIB. And by letting Obamacare survive in such a dubious manner, uh, Roberts undermined the trust that people have that courts are impartial arbiters rather than political actors.